Welcome to the second last seminar for today. And uh, we are going to have game developer and demosciner Martin Nurmikari here to talk us. Please, let's welcome him. Okay. Uh, everybody, thanks for coming. I'm going to be talking to you about boring things today. And now, don't get me wrong, uh, doing demos is the most fun you can have in front of the computer. But in actually, to be able to do demos, you need, first need to have some kind of uh, engine and a system where with you sh which you shall use to do it. And I'm going to be talking to you about the system or the approach to the demo system that I use. But first, uh, let's think, what's, what is a demo? This is my definition. A program real-time demonstration that combines visuals and audio. And also, a demo is not interactive, so you can cheat. What this means is that unlike in a game engine, where you have to worry about play, uh, user interaction and enemies and AI, AI and that sort of stuff, you, really, you can just concentrate on doing the visuals in a demo. And also, you, know, you don't have to worry about player going to weird places or all such things, so, because you can just show the user what, he, what, what you want. And uh, what goes in a demo? Uh, we have, of course, the effects or visuals in general. Then we have the interface to the operating system, which is basically the windowing, uh, message loop, maybe uh, keyboard handling, so your user can press escape when he or she doesn't want to see the demo anymore. Uh, you might have configuration dialogues and such things. Uh, then we have resources, which are images, meshes, shaders, sound, maybe your own custom data like splines or whatever. Then we have a timeline, which is basically what happens when, like when, does, when is, is this effect shown and when is this effect shown and so on. Then we have a synchronization, which is uh, how to make the visuals react to the music. In my opinion, this is the, most, the number one thing to actually make a demo look good. You need to have a good synchronization. Then in a demo engine, you have utilities, which are maths, maybe string, string utilities, file loading, and such things. Uh, and finally, you, have, or you should have some form, form of uh, parameters and tweaking. So, which is uh, how to, uh, how, which is useful when you are trying to, like, make the demo actually look good. Okay. Uh, so, I think there are basically two schools and two ways to make a demo. I call them the artist way and the programmer way. The artist way uh, is a newer of these. So, it means that the programmer uh, makes a tool that someone else, or maybe the programmer himself or herself, uh, uses to make a demo. So the tool would probably be something like a combination of between, let's say, 3ds Max and Photoshop or whatever. So it would include uh, resource management or ed editors and timeline editors and maybe some way to build the demo scene, uh, scenes in the demo. And some of the groups that use this approach are, for example, Fairlight, Farbrowse, Conspiracy, and Still. Uh, Farbrowse has actually released their tool, so you can see how it works. And then there's the programmer's way, which is the old school, traditional way. I, I think it's a much better way to start out with, because when you're doing a first demo, you really usually you sh probably don't know what you're actually doing. So, uh, so you can experiment with that. Uh, and the idea of the programmer way is that the programmer actually builds the scenes and codes the visuals, so you don't have any kind of fancy editors or anything. And some of the people who use this approach are MFX, a very famous Finnish group, ASD, and Traction. That's, that's me. So, which platform to choose? Now, uh, nowadays, there are two basic, basic uh, 3DI APIs, which are DirectX and OpenGL. DirectX is modern. It's only for Windows. Personally, I, would, I think I would choose DirectX. It's maybe a bit harder to start out with, but uh, it's also also much more robust, and the drivers are insanely better than in OpenGL. Then we have OpenGL, which is what I still use. I should switch to DirectX. It's uh, partially outdated. For example, the drivers on Windows are awful, and it doesn't really have all the features that DirectX has. But of course, if you want to do a demo on Linux or Mac, you have to use OpenGL. And then we also have the old school platforms, like the C64, 
similar spectrum are all the 8-bit and 16-bit co home computers. Uh, much what I'm going to be talking to you tonight uh, is not really valid anyway. In those platforms, they are very sp special and they are old. And then, you, of course, you can do software rendering if you want. But few people do that nowadays. It's kind of fun and has its own appeal, but most people stick to accelerated 3D. Okay, so uh, briefly about programming languages that you use to make demos. Most or the vast majority of demos are written in C++. Uh, some people still use C, some use C Sharp. If you're absolutely new to programming and want to make demos, that's fantastic. Uh, I think you should try to... I think Python is a very good language to start programming with. And of course, as long as you can draw something with the language, it, you can use to make it a demo. So people can use Pascal or Erlang or Lisp or whatever. And I'm still hoping that someone will someday make an Emacs demo. And uh, also, uh, assembly language used to be the main language for doing demos with. It's not that anymore. I don't think most Windows demos ever contain a line of assembly language. But of course, if you are doing demos on, let's say, a C64, you really don't have a choice. So some basic things about what you should, what you should think about before you actually start doing your demo engine. Be smart, don't be stupid. Uh, you should really know, uh, know how, how to program. You should really know how to use your tools. Uh, C++, for example, has this uh, STL, which is standard template library, which includes all kinds of useful things. You should really learn that because build something, building something like an engine will really benefit from those tools that your language will, pr language will provide you. Also, be sensible, don't over-engineer. So, in the end, most demos are really simple, at least most of these simple coder wave demos. I have a French friend who's actually maybe watching this. Uh, he, he's a really good programmer, but he always starts to over-engineer things, and he re really w wants to do a demos, but then he ends up doing something like template functions for automatic debugging or whatever, and he will never get anything done. So stick to simple things. And finally, be lazy. And I, be la being lazy is good because that means that you will do things once and you will do them properly. So don't, don't uh, do bad or spaghetti code. You just think before you do and then do, then do it briefly. OK, so I think uh, in a demo engine or a demo in general, the most important single thing is to keep your code and data separate. What this means is that you should not have to do the uh, thing that most demo coders, I think, still do, which is you uh, code your effect or whatever, you, you run it, you don't like what you see, you go back, you change a the number, then you compile it again and run it again and so forth. That's a very expensive and tiresome thing to do. So you should try to have some way of having your effect parameters and data separate from the actual engine code. And also, it's really useful to have the engine code separate from the actual FX code, because then you can easily reuse the, all the engine code you've written. But if you're doing, let's say, a 4K intro, you really should ignore this, because you don't have space to do anything fancy anyway. So, so just do what works. So let's go through the things that the demo engine you need. There's, uh, I think the first thing you should really do is the interfacing to your operating system. And this is the windowing, keyboard handling, maybe mouse handling, that sort of st stuff. This is usually very boring to write. So that's why you usually should stick to solutions that have proven to work. If you're using OpenGL, the Simple Direct Media Library, or SDL. SDL is excellent. It includes uh, keyboard handling timers, OpenGL windows, and all that. And especially if you're doing stuff on Linux, you really should use SDL. It's very portable. If you're doing a uh, DirectX demo, or, or anyway, if you're doing a demo in Windows, there's a bunch of excellent examples in the DirectX uh, developer kit. You really should just rip your base code from somewhere there and start building a demo on top. That's what everybody, everybody does. For music, there's a bunch of audio libraries. There's FMOD and Bass, which are both written by seniors, and they're actually really popular in demo scene, I think most most uh, demos, if they don't use a custom software synthesizer, they will use either one of these. 
And the same thing applies for image libraries. So there's OpenIL, which I use. It opens pretty much everything. It's free. And there's the lib -lib JPEG and libpng for those formats. And he, I think the big lazy maxim here is the thing that you really want to do because this, I have personally written this, these things once and I don't want to write them again. So you should really st st steal, steal this from somewhere to, to get the demo done quickly. Then there are utilities, which are small things in the demo engine, like vectors, matrices, maybe quaternions, string classes, file loading, whatever. And maybe even some simple quick ways to test stuff out by rendering primitives. So I think you should have uh, one class in the demo engine where you can do actually really quickly put something on the screen that will help you to test things out. But these are really minor things and when you need them, you will probably write them. So the, use this as when you feel like you need them. Now, I think uh, number one, one of the two ec really important things about a proper demo engine is handling resources. And these are the, your shaders, images, whatever. And why well, this is important because uh, you will have uh, lots of resources in a demo, and with a demo, you have a really quick pr production cycle usually, so you will try out lots of different things. And if your resource handling is not up to date, up to par, you will end up with problems. So, what you really should not do is basically this. So, this is the example of bad code. You, see, you can see here, this is like pseudocode. I am creating uh, two texture objects, then I'm loading them somewhere. And then, in, two, in these two effects, I am uh, basically, in the first effect, I am using the blob texture and then draw a blob effect or whatever. And in the second uh, effect, I'm using the cube texture and draw the cube effect and then do the, draw the blob thing all on top of it again. And this is bad because, uh, first, uh, for example, there, uh, in both of the effect files, there's a reference to the blob texture. And so if you want to change them in uh, one place, you will actually have to do, uh, do uh, another separate re resource and then load it again. And if you do this and you have, let's say, 50 textures and 200 shaders or whatever, you will end up with problems and probably lots of bugs also. So what you sh actually should do is you should apply the manager pattern. And I think uh, for, a, for a lightweight, nice coder engine, I think the manager pattern is really the key to it. Uh, the manager I is a one single object that will handle all access and requests to certain type. For example, for textures you have texture manager, for uh, meshes you have mesh manager and so on. And uh, I, I have an example on how, for example, this thing that was in the previous slide would be implemented with the manager pattern. So instead of actually accessing the object, I I asked the texture manager to, uh, to use the object for me. So this means that everything goes through the texture manager, and uh, it's, it's much easier to change. For example, I have here, I ref instead of referring to this by object, I refer to this by name, which in practice means that this, it's much, much more easier to change and switch around. And also, by this manager uh, approach, you don't have to load your resources manually and create objects for them. So basically, you just put them in a directory and tell your manager to load everything from the directory, and then you're done. And also, uh, one more thing that's really good about this path pattern is that uh, you can use it for debugging. For example, my engine, I have this uh, flag for each texture that it says, uh, has this texture been used in the demo? And if it hasn't, it will print out, in the end of the demo, it will print out a list of these have, resources have not been used. And then when you're actually releasing your demo, you can just like take out all the stuff that you haven't used, because usually there will be lots of resources in a demo that are re really are not used. So it will increase loading times and make your viewers more happy. And the other important thing besides resources in a demo is a timeline. So the basic idea of the timeline is that you put time in and a demo comes out. So how you do it inside your demo, it's, uh, there are several choices. Uh, 
first and the obvious and the easy choice is to do like this huge main loop, which has thousands and thousands of if lines, if else statements. So basically, it would be something like if time is less than 50 seconds and if time is more than 70 seconds, render this. Else, if time is more than 70 seconds but less than 115 seconds, render this, and so forth. Uh, a lot of people y y still do this. It's kind of nice and quick way to test things out, but of course, maintaining it, it will be awful. And reusing the code between, or reusing the effects between the scenes is kind of easy with uh, this approach, but in the end, it will be a huge amount of work. So the other use, uh, commonly used uh, way of handling a timeline is that you have one uh, base class for something that appears in the timeline, and all the and all the effects and scenes or whatever you have are inherited from that one class. So basically what this means is that when you are initializing your demo, you will, have, you, will tell, uh, you will create a bunch of these objects and tell each of them when they will start and when they will end and, when, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and the render priority. What I mean by render priority is that when the demo engine renders a frame. It will go through all the, th all the effects that you have in your demo, uh, pick out the ones that are active, and make a list out of those, and then sort that list by the priority so you can, with, so you can control the order on, on which they are drawn with the priority. Now, this is a very neat and object-oriented way of doing a timeline system, but uh, it, ha it has its problems, for example, a transi transitioning from one effect to another might be really difficult because basically they are in separate blocks of code, so you re they don't see each other. You, of course, you can make them see each other, but that's, that's not really nice C++ programming, but then again, this is a demo, so you might do that. And also, sharing code between two, uh, two of these objects might be difficult, but you can then, of course, always write a third part of code that is used by both. I definitely recommend that you use uh, this scene class approach. You can try the other one, and for some, pre some people it works. For example, uh, Andromeda Software Development, who is known for doing really awesome transitions and beautiful demos, they, they use the first approach, but I'm just not that good, so I don't. Okay, so uh, then in a demo we have synchronization. Uh, I think there are basically three ways to do this. The first one is triggers and events. Uh, what the trigger is, is basically just uh, a point in time. So you will, you will have, uh, let's say, a trigger at, at uh, 60 seconds and 62 seconds and 64 seconds. So you will have a list of these, and then you can ask your engine, so uh, please let me know if we, have, if we are close to, close to a trigger and you can sync stuff to that. So basically, if you would, do, if you, if you would uh, use triggers, you would put them where uh, there are interesting bits in the song, and then just ask your engine, okay, I'm, okay, now the trigger has been passed, and now I will flash the screen or whatever. Events are uh, just like triggers, but uh, in my engine, I have a distinction that event is something that there is only one event, and triggers can be like multiple triggers. So you can, for example, sync the bass drum to the triggers, but if there's like a speech sample, you, you would use an event. The distinction is really arbitrary, so, so you feel free to implement only one system. Then you can synchronize by using beat calculation, which, which means that, let's say, you ask your musician uh, so that your song goes like 150 beats per minute, and then you would, then you would uh, calculate that, okay, I'm so far in the song, so I'm at 15th measure, fourth beat, and like one, one, one sixteenth note passed. So uh, for some so kind of songs like, let's say, hardcore techno, this would work really well because you get really accurate synchronization. Uh, for some other kind of songs, let's say this something like ambient soundscape music, which doesn't have a beat, this would obviously be worthless. And the third uh, way of synchronizing, or the usually synchronized thing, uh, is uh, audio data. So basically, uh, most good sound systems should provide you this, both F mode and bass do. 
uh, you will uh, get a buffer, which is basically the frequencies that are playing in the song. So you can do processing on the buffer and see, let's say, uh, there are so and so many high frequencies right now, and then you can use that value to, let's say, uh, tweak an effect somehow. Or you can do the same with bass. And this is especially useful for like these MTV-style glitches and beeps that distort the screen or whatever when th there's funny sound in the music. Uh, but this is usually pretty hard to get uh, tuned right. And also, this, depend, this kind of syncing uh, depends very much on the mas uh, mixing and mastering of the music. So, for example, I can give you a personal example. Uh, at the assembly 2006, we released a demo called Tudor the Fifth, which uh, had really lots of uh, FFT syncing. And after the party, the musician really wanted to remix the track. And he made the track a lot better, but also all the syncs in the demo with the new track are off because the frequencies are different. So, and it, the demo actually doesn't really look that good, and we never bothered to fix it. Uh, and in synchronization, uh, you have basically two choices. You can, uh, or in timeline in general, you can have your time in seconds or, or milliseconds, or you can have them by beat measures. So some uh, people do their demo timeline not based on seconds, but they do it based on beats and measures, like I explained in the beat calculation part. Uh, I have never done this, because I think, for me personally, uh, the seconds are easier way of approaching this thing. I'm not a musician. But uh, for, for syncing, the beat thing is inherently better, because then you can easily just ask your engine that Please, please do some cool thing every 13th beat or whatever the, mu the music goes. OK, and uh, then in, I think a demo engine should have parameters or tweaking. So you can change stuff while the demo is actually running. This isn't mandatory. Most people, or many people do that code, change a number, compile, run, don't like change the number of code, don't like, but most people also have better things to do than that. So, uh, so you have many ways to do this. I think uh, the e easiest way is to have, let's say, a bunch of parameters in text file, and you can just change the values, press a button in the demo, and the demo will re reload the text file, and you will s have some form of accessing the data from the demo side. Uh, it really s helps, especially in the part where we are at the demo part, really trying to get things done fast to make the demo look good. Uh, for the actual engine development, it doesn't really matter. Uh, my demo system has uh, these five uh, functionalities, so I can, play, I can uh, start the demo, pause the demo, go back and forward in time. I can reload all the effects and parameters, and re-init all the effects and parameters. So basically, reload just loads the XML again, and uh, re-init re in initializes all the effects. So you can, for example, put some stuff in the effect constructor and then call re-init, and it will change on the screen. And of, of course, uh, if you add a graphical user interface and uh, saving the file for this, uh, so you can just like pull some nice, nice slider with a mouse or whatever, then you also always, already have a way to a demo tool that is like the artist way. This is something that I have been meaning to do for months now, but I haven't so far. And finally, in demo, you have effects. Now, unfortunately, I don't have much time, and I can't really speak much for uh, how effects are made, because it's graphics in general, and it, there's not, nothing special in it. But I, I would like to mention the point that basically there are two ways, I think, to approach uh, like coding actual demo effects. There's concepts and there's technology. So concepts would be like, I want to dem do a demo about loneliness, or I want to do a demo that has really nice techno and this really Berlin kind of thing, and, uh, for example. Or I mean, the technology would be like, I want to do this really cool smoke simulation, or I want to do some really greatest new shading model technology or whatever. Uh, what you want to do, it's, uh, it's up to you. It's your demo. 
I think that the best demos are usually the ones that combine these both approaches. Uh, for effect tips, I think you could look. There's a lot of demos with source code available uh, on, on the internet. And finally, there's nothing, uh, nothing special about demo effects. So there used to be really special things when they were done in Amiga and there was these cool hardware tricks or whatever. But nowadays, demos are just graphics programming. And if you can do graphics programming, you can do demos. And uh, finally, I would like to end the effects part by uh, quoting Navis of ASD who said that sign and coast can build cathedrals. And if you have seen his demos, you can know that this is actually true. And most demo effects are really simple. So uh, here are some links I put together. I think there's, these are worth seeing. Uh, these slides will be av available online. So there's Frontend, which is an engine for, uh, it's kind of a demo engine. Uh, made by some Norwegian guys from the group Outrax. It's really good. It's better than my engine. It has, it has all the nasty stuff that I talked about, and it also has things like networking and user interfacing properly and so forth. You can also use it to make games. Uh, they, uh, the group Outrax themselves have released many demos using the front end, and also they, those demos come with source, so you can see how they're done. Uh, for 4K intros, there's in 4 kuntergrundnet which is an excellent database for getting on how to do 4K intro. Uh, I think for a beginning demo coder, 4K intro is a really nice project because it's in inherently small, but it also includes most of the stuff like timeline and whatever you have. And then there's finally, there's my homepage. I put up really, a really fast page for, with, uh, for demo programming, which Right now, it includes my current demo engine, completely source. If you want it, feel free to go and get it and use it any way you want. Uh, in the future, it will contain all the demos that I make. There's only one now from uh, April at Breakpoint, but there, will be, there will, be, will be more. And so, uh, this was basically my presentation. Unfortunately, it was, uh, this, the topic is so wide, so I can't go into details. Uh, if you want to discuss details, I, I will take questions soon. And also feel free to email me. I'll just come to talk to me. I'll be hanging around here. Yes. So, uh, any questions? Any questions? Just feel free to ask. It seems there is no questions, so thank you for our speaker. Okay, thank you. And And there are a lot of you here, so I hope that ne uh, this year and next year I will see many demos from new groups here at Assembly. And also I have to uh, add one uh, ad ad advertisement. There is uh, there's a really nice demo party called Stream uh, in Tampere in September. You all should all be there. There will be many seniors there and who are interested in these topics, and I will be there. And then we can all have a beer. Thanks. <laughs>